Good day learners and welcome to our English virtual class. Stay tuned as we unlock new ideas and insights for today's episode. It's me again, your English buddy, Teacher Bertley, who will help you to learn English well. Good day and God bless everyone. I am Bertlin Villahawan Marcel from the BSM English 2. So for today, I am going to present my assigned topic since we uh, meant to divide our topic. I am the first reporter and today I am going to report my topic, the learners with additional needs. So... Children learn every day. This happens in various settings and different ways. Learning at times happens intentionally and with a great effort while there are situations where it happens almost effortlessly. On these chapters, uh, it focuses on learners with additional needs, highlighting the definition uh, talk about the learning characteristic and the general education adaptations that will help uh, a teachers achieve a fluently learning in a resolving basic conflict in a certain learning field. So, at the end of this topic, uh, the students are able to identify the various uh, additional needs learners might have. Uh, second, the uh, differentiate the uh, educational needs from one another. The third one is to recognize the characteristic of learners with additional needs and discuss the marginalizations means. And lastly, is to identify the different marginalized groups. And first, I am going to discuss to you the learners who are gifted and talented. So who are the learners are gifted and talented? So the learners are uh, those are the students with higher abilities than average and uh, often referred to as a gifted students. So when we define a uh, gifted students, those are the students who have the abilities with, uh, shall I say, have in a higher ranking. Uh, they are more uh, complex or they are more uh, they are more they are more advantageous in terms of learning fields so these groups uh, refers to students who whose talents abilities and potential are developed mentally advanced uh, they have also a special prevention to meet their educational needs and might more ask for more creative tasks or exercises so these uh, learners be belong to as a gifted or a talented which is those oh, students or in able more help on their talents and especially their abilities uh, and the potentials and develop advance so how we could uh, barely uh, develop well this uh, characteristic of students who have been uh, who have been belonging to this gifted and talented so we could as uh, teachers we could be uh, having a, a activities like could be could could have an excitement or energizing that keep them motivated so what is the difference between the gifted and the talented? So the, te the term giftedness refers to the students with an extraordinary abilities in various academic area. While a talented, it is focuses on students with extraordinary abilities in a specific area. So um, learners, we could be called them as giftedness if thus if that uh, students are could be. Uh, have the ability in all aspects like uh, that students are um, are more or good in English academic, good in mathematics academic, or good in uh, in all right fields that we call as a gifted students. While a talented student it is 
uh, his or her ability in one specific area. It means that uh, students are good in English academic but not good in math in math academic. That's why uh, we will. Uh, that's the the term between the giftedness and the talented one. Uh, let's proceed to the second slides. So, uh, but how we are going to identify a gifted children or how we are going to describe or how we are going to uh, allocate uh, either that children are gifted or are talented. So, in 1993, a gardener uh, uh, drew his conceptualized that the, gifted, the, the giftedness of a children, according to him, is uh, more have in intelligence is multiplicated, which means uh, this intelligence could be numerous or could be uh, many as one or many more than one. So, to identify the gifted and talented students, one must do the following. So, uh, to identify the students, it could be first to locate the student's domain giftedness. So, as you will see the screen, uh, here are the uh, intelligence, uh, multitask intelligence, which is uh, we could is easily we could easily identify childrens whether it is good uh, those children in arts, good that's uh, that's children subject capability in dancing or other tasks they wanted to do so in order to uh, identify the children so we could be uh, locate the students domain giftedness the describe the students level of giftedness or uh, how that students are good in music or good in numbers or good in identifying logic and logarithm then third one is describe the student fields of talent so so that uh, three identifications we could easily describe or we could easily identify the children the children who are able in good in that different place next we are going to also to uh, identify the learning characteristic no mm, not all learners will exhibit at uh, the learning characteristic listed uh, below so as I say that uh, not all the learners could be uh, good and in that in that field or good well uh, good well in that field but however these are the common manifest manifestations of a gifted and talented learners and what and one might possess a combination of characteristic in varying degrees and amounts so uh, they could be the learning characteristic of how children uh, possess or how children develop their learning characteristics so first we have a high level of intellectual curiosity so we could identify the students of uh, through its high level of intellectual curiosity let like the students is uh, asking more uh, asking more questions so just like students do have a high critical thinking next it could be reads actively or those children who have been a uh, fun in reading and also have a degree of a task commitment and uh, can power of observation and high verbal then uh, uh, those students who get uh, gets bored easily and can retain the recall informations uh, excited about learning your concept so that the some uh, reason of a learning characteristic of a students uh, then second is the independence and learning so that could be uh, the students that is very independent in her learning so uh, sh she or he doesn't not need any of the men any of the guide of the mentors because as as uh, themselves they could be able to uh, they could be able to solve what kind of problems what they have faced uh, second is a good comprehension of complex context uh, students who have strong will develop 
uh, imagination looks for new ways to do things so this uh, learning characteristic are the uh, most uh, possessed characteristic of the students who are belong and students who are gifted and talented one so uh, some students also uh, are very gifted but how do we develop or how do a teachers develop well this kind of gift or a talent so learners who are gifted and talented usually get bored since they are mastered in a concept taught in the classes uh, one thing that is common uh, among gifted students is that they are very inquisitive fulfilling their instructional needs may be challenging tasks these are some suggested strategies for teaching uh, a gifted students so here are the some general ad adaptation on how we are going to deal this kind of students or children in the classroom so first is uh, must do a, a teacher is that uh, give enrichment exercises so it is important to that a teacher give uh, may give uh, enrichment uh, exercises that will allow learners to study the same topic at a more advanced level so in in dealing this kind of a gifted uh, teach uh, gifted students a teacher should have uh, a proper enrichment of their exercises to allow learners study the same topic as well then uh, second is the acceleration acceleration uh, to an, an open-ended activities so acceleration can let students who are gifted and talented can move at their own pace uh, those resulting at times to in completing two grade levels in one school year so it is important also to give uh, accelerate uh, for the students uh, who are gifted because in order for them to move in other to to move their own pace as they learn as well so uh, also a teachers also give an open-ended activities because it can divert the thinking where there are more possibilities that pre determined answers so uh, let the so teachers let the students uh, discover their own will and let uh, a teacher should be a uh, give guide also so uh, second is give uh, uh, can be a leadership rules so can be leadership rules can be given to a gifted student since studies have shown that gifted students are often socially immature so so a teachers also can give uh, as uh, a gifted students to be a role model of uh, anyone it could be a role model in the classrooms just uh, giving a uh, role model as well as giving in some sentences uh, to the their classmates so extensive reading on subjects could their own interest may be coordinated with a school librarian to further broaden their knowledge so as a gifted students uh, it could uh, help for them to extend or could be uh, give and reading materials that could be uh, help develop them more then uh, long-term activity may must be provided or that uh, so that it will give the gifted uh, students an opportunity to engage for an extended period of time so uh, if if there's an a gifted so there could be uh, some not gifted students to be talk about so uh, second topic we will talk about the learners with difficulty seeing so uh, how these uh, learners could be so there are uh, be some students with hampered or restricted vision learners with difficulty seeing are those with issues regarding sight that interfere with academics so uh, in our classroom we should also consider some our students have a difficulty in seeing so and um, if those uh, those uh, learning uh, those children or 
compared with seeing could not be able to achieve uh, the right am uh, amount of learning. So according to IDEA or Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, it stated that the impairment uh, adversely it can affect child's education performance. So as uh, in uh, impairedly seeing can also affect the the uh, child child's education performance because uh, his or uh, these children could not be able to join uh, your act uh, the act the classroom activity if there's some entrances uh, that could be the hindrance of being uh, a difficulty in seeing so child uh, so what could be some assumption that could uh, give the children or could give the parents or the teachers in order to mitigate this kind of problem so uh, 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 children were I able to wear glasses or other optical devices that could be the remedial for this problem. So uh, since uh, we are now uh, uh, talking to the to the uh, to these uh, children who have been difficult in seeing, so we could be uh, 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 give an aid so so that uh, giving them uh, our uh, giving a children to a uh, devices like a remedial uh, glasses and other optical devices is the one of the main uh, remedial to this problem so how could we identify uh, these uh, children who have been inspiring difficulty seeing so learners with difficulty seeing often have physical signs like cross eyes squinting squinting and eyes that uh, turn outwards so that students uh, we can identify those students who have been uh, difficulty in seeing like uh, like uh, their eyes have crossed like this like this and have this have a squinting area those uh, children who have been something like uh, doing like this and eyes towards the turn upwards those eyes is like this so those are students or there as a child uh, a child that have experiencing the difficulty of seeing so also uh, students could uh, difficulty seeing they like sit near to the instructional materials or at times would stand up and go on their visual aids so we could uh, identify that student if the students in our classroom have could be difficult in seeing because uh, the students are uh, have a assurance to uh, to go to the in front so that uh, it could be see clearly for them to show what and uh, what could be the visual aids uh, put so learners with difficulty seeing may also show poor eye-hand coordination. This can be seen in their handwriting or poor in performance in sporting activities. So we can identify also a child's uh, difficulty uh, could uh, have a difficulty seeing if those a child have uh, a, a difficult uh, have uh, have a poor in handwriting because as you will see if you cannot. Uh, 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 give a remedial to this uh, problem it could be affect the child's uh, academic uh, performance so an, another indication is poor academic performances as these uh, students might have difficulty in reading as well as writing so if children experiencing this kind of difficulties uh, uh, it will follow that uh, the children might be lost or might be uh, poor in terms of their academic performances. So, so how we uh, identify or how we develop their uh, this kind of or how we can uh, help this kind of children who are experiencing this kind of problem. So in this uh, learning characteristics, so good visual ability is critical and learning so most schools uh school lessons are done through blackboard writing presentation or handouts uh it could be a reason to an individual impairments and it could affect child's ability to participate classroom activities so uh 
actually our our ways in dealing uh, giving the, the instructional materials it could be written or hands on the presentation or shall be uh, right in the blackboard so uh, it could be the the disadvantage this uh, uh, disadvantage to this a bit uh, to a per, to a child who has a, a visual impairments because uh, because it can lead uh, them affect the ability to participate in classroom activities so they could not be able to participate well if uh, if doesn't have uh, something that you could be do uh, in order to participate this kind of children who have this problem so how we could be give them a, a remedial or how we can give this kind of children or how we can give ways on how these children participate our classes are or participate the cla the classroom activities that we are given so modification um, and teaching is needed to accommodate students with difficulty in seeing so this could be the following uh, strategies that could be considered and to be helpful to help uh, accommodate this uh, child who are experiencing this kind of problem so first uh, so first uh, as a teacher so so first as a teachers uh, we need to use books as part of the lessons why uh, if the use of books is part of our lesson, students with difficulty seeing uh, should be informed ahead of time so that they can be ordered in, in braille or in an audio rec uh, recorded format. So, it is important also as a teacher to uh, locate or how, and how you are going to deal this kind of uh, children, uh, children that could be able to help for them to acquire also the the learning you wanted to uh, provide. So second is the portion of textbooks and other printed materials may be recorded so that a visually impaired students can listen instead of focusing the visual presentations. So as a teachers, we are uh, we are uh, of, we are uh, do our duty to uh, to give always or to give. Uh, what we can do in order for our children acquired everything we wanted for them to acquire so uh, second one is all words written on the board should be read and clear so that uh, uh, that students who have been uh, experiencing a uh, difficult in seeing could easily uh, could not be the hindrance or could be easily for them to read what was the directions uh, written on the blackboard so students with difficulty seeing should be seated near the, the board so that they can easily move close to the instructional materials used during the lesson so uh, as a teacher uh, we are uh, uh, ob uh, uh, obliged also to uh, put our if our students have been experiencing like this so we are advised to put uh, our students in front so that it could not be an easy for them to uh, uh, to to, uh, to participate because the our activity so uh, a body can be assigned uh, to a students with a difficulty seeing as needed this can be a crucial to assess uh, in the mobility of the students mobility of the students to such as going and the other places in school during the day. Students with difficulty seeing also might need more time to a complete task or a homework. Then this might be a case-to-case -case basis. And also a teacher should monitor the students closely to know who needs extra time in completing the task. So as a teachers, we are also uh, not just giving instructional materials, giving a classroom activities, but also to monitor our students because uh, as, as we experience like students who have been, uh, have this kind of disabilities in our classrooms.
so next uh, we will uh, define also the learners with difficulty hearing on how we're going to handle this kind of this kind of uh, problem so according to the idea they define that the impairments of hearing the students experiencing this kind this uh, could affect the students educational performance performance performances so the main challenges of hearing impairment students in is communication since in teaching modalities we are referring a varying ways of communicating communicating so the main challenges uh, uh, we are done about talking the a child who have been experiencing in in seeing but now we are also talk about the learners who with the difficulty in hearing so uh, it is refers to the students when an issues regarding hearing that interferes with academic so there are some students also who have been experiencing an, uh, a definition to uh, 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 experiencing the difficulty of hearing first is that uh, as we dealing as our dealing in our communicating ways the main problem of these children who have been experiencing uh, uh, this kind of problem is that uh, uh, students uh, how the communicate on how we are going to communicate or how going to deal with these students so how we are going to identify this kind of students so uh, we are going to do is to identify learners with difficulty hearing uh, we can observe students and and see if he or he does the following items so we can so we can identify uh, those different students by by letting them see this kind of differences so uh, these students could be speaking loudly this could be the student who are positioning uh, ear toward the direction of one speaking so we could identify the student if there's someone of the students having a problem in hearing is that uh, uh, his or her ear uh, positioning toward the speaker just like uh, for example like this so this uh, uh, they could be uh, could uh, some reason it's reason that those children have been a problem uh, with that something in hearing so asking information to be repeated again and again so uh, we could also identify that students if the students asking uh, some directions or some information repeated again and again uh, should add a uh, delayed uh, development of speech watching the face of the speakers intently or should just like uh, something as, uh, as we can identify also the student if that students could have a watch the face of the speakers uh, intently so favoring one ear and not responding when in cold has difficulty following direction does not mind loud noises so these are the identification of how we identify those children who have experienced this kind of disabilities so how we are going to connect with them or how we're going to provide uh, learners uh, these kinds of problems so students may overcome this problem in a ways of investing energy and a combined effort by both parents and educators so we could be overcome these problems if uh, or or shall I say the students who have been experiencing this kind of problem can overcome throughout to the health of their parents and their mentors. So if we could be invest more time or uh, invest our energy to touch them well, they could achieve or uh, they could have achieved the fair permanent of education and treatment in terms of the treatment in educate educating uh, them. So uh, we can uh, easily overcome this this by providing them and hearing aids that will help them acquire learning things without hesitations. So we could, as a teachers, also we could not uh, we could be uh, a reason for them to have 
a way so we, that we can provide something that could easily for them to help uh, in acquiring our activity to be handled. So on how we are going to uh, to help or how we are going to assumption the uh, uh, we could uh, our ways we could help them uh, adapt the education they wanted to adapt with them. So there is an assumption that only adjustment for hearing impaired students is to make all the instructional materials and techniques in written format. These are the other ways to adapt to hearing impairment students. So this could be the following uh, strategies on how we are going to uh, put these children so that they could be able to join, they could be able to uh, for them to acquire the, the same learning as the gifted and talented students as well. So, uh, first, uh, a teacher should help uh, develop ability for speech and reading. So, some others might be have a difficulty in hearing uh, so that uh, a teacher could help uh, use a residual hearing might be have. So teachers should help students develop the ability for speech reading or watching others sleep mount and experience. So as a teachers, uh, it could be the ability, uh, could be a responsibility for a uh, for a teacher to to give uh, some effort to maintain or to uh, to give a permit a uh, pair uh, in the in dealing this kind of. Uh, ways or this kind of strategies so a second one is to uh, teachers should be mindful uh, to the face uh, the class at all times with presenting information while ensuring that the students with difficulty uh, hearing sit near them so uh, as a teachers it could be uh, open-minded as well so that uh, if there's any repetitions it could be uh, something questions could be addresses as well so direction as well as an important part of the lesson should always be written on the board so um, uh, sh so that uh, your students have a problem in hearing so all you need to do is to write all the instruction in the board so that it could be not uh, hard for them to uh, to to in making them and uh, uh, not hard for them to uh, to to make uh, easy for them to acquire something because all the instructions are written in the blackboard so a teacher should be more patient wa when awaiting to hear responses from a hearing impaired students which may take longer than a usual so as a teachers uh, as a teachers uh, we are all the one uh, uh, not not just to be patient, not just uh, to be uh, lovable, but also a teachers could have a long patience so that uh, because uh, if you are willing to teach uh, something, uh, if you you are willing uh, to give uh, as as yourselves, you are the only way to make everything good possible, make possible things happen. So that would be my topic and God bless us all. So the next topic would be uh, report, uh, reported ma to my partner. So God bless us. Thank you for watching.